Hey, what's up guys, Pablo Munoz here. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today I have a bunch of tips and tricks for ZBrush and I can guarantee that at least one of the things that I'm gonna show you, you haven't heard of or you haven't used it before. So it's pretty exciting because I managed to put them all together in a kind of like a sequential step-by-step -step process to create a baseball. Now I know that the object itself might sound a little bit simple, just a sphere with a bunch of stitches, but the reality is that the way that it's constructed and the details of it is uh, it's a bit more complex than that. So I'm gonna give you kind of like the, all the steps to create a baseball, but uh, just keep in mind that the whole idea of this tutorial is just to give you these tips and tricks that are kind of like hidden or that you might have never heard of them before inside ZBrush. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in ZBrush and this is basically what we're going to be creating, just a, a baseball. Uh, we might not get into the, the texturing or anything like that. In fact, let me just turn this off so you can see the, the full details and you know the overall shape of the baseball. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm gonna show you how to create all of these and in the process show you a bunch of tips that I think are really powerful. So I have the version 2024 and in fact, you can do mostly everything that I'm gonna show you in this video with previous versions of Sirius, so 2022 or 2023, uh, that'll be totally fine. There is only one feature from 2024 and I believe it is also in 2023 that, um, that I'm gonna show you and that I'm gonna use. But uh, if you don't have this version of ZBrush, that is totally fine. It's not gonna stop you from creating or, or following along with this tutorial. It just means that um, you might have to do things a bit more manually when we get to it, uh, but I'll let you know. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. I'm actually going to set this to AA half so that there's no you know, weird artifacts. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with a cube. Now you might think that because this is a sphere, the easiest thing would be to just create a sphere and you can totally do so if you just wanna sculpt things around. But this is kind of like the first trick that I'm gonna give you. So I'm gonna click on cube 3D and this is what I got. And let's also turn on the polyframe so you can see it. And in order to work on this one, this is just a primitive 3D. I'm gonna click on make polymesh 3D. So now I can edit this mesh and I can just pull and push this uh, you know, points and polygons anywhere that I want to. Now, let me just clear this alpha because this is something that I had before. There we go. So this is the, the standard UI and I have the standard brush. All right, so now this is all good, but I want to simplify this a lot more just so that we have more control over the shape. So let's go down to the bottom where it says initialize, the bottom of the tool palette, and I'm going to click on Q cube. Now you have these sliders here. These determine how many uh, cuts the Q cube or the quick cube is going to have. So let's click on Q cube. And you see, it is very simple and it um, kind of like adheres to the two by two units in ZBrush. And these sliders right here, that's what I meant about the, the subdivision. So it has two subdivision in the X, Y, and Z. You can change that if you want to, but I'm gonna keep it simple, right? So this is what we want. Now, the next step is to uh, simplify the amount of polygroups because right now there's a bunch of them. So to do that, let's go ahead. And by the way, I'm just rotating things around uh, very smoothly with the 3D connection space mouse, just in case you, you're wondering, uh, but that doesn't have anything to do with the tutorial. So let's Let's go ahead and hold the control and shift key to access the, the selection brushes. I'm going to start rotating and pressing the shift key just to snap to the side. And let's actually go to the floor. I'm going to make sure that, yeah, I want to, I want to make sure that the Z axis is pointing towards me so that then I can work with symmetry. So that's all I wanted to do. Let's turn this off and I'm going to hold control and shift again. And I'm going to select these ones. So now the rest is hidden and we can go ahead and rotate around and you won't see the inside. Um, probably, depending on how your settings are. So let's go to the display properties and I'm gonna click on double. So that allows you to see the inside of the polygons. So this is pretty much what we want. I'm gonna hold control and W to assign a single polygroup. And now let's invert the selection, control shift, click and drag. And let's do the same thing. Control W again to assign another polygroup. Let's bring back the rest by holding control shift and click once in the canvas. So now I have this uh, kind of like C shapes going, right? And this is basically the, the shape of the baseball, right? It is made out of like two patches or two pieces. I have some references in here just to let you know what I'm looking at. So basically those uh, C shapes that we created or those um, polygroups are the equivalent to, let's say, this section right here and the one going uh, horizontally in this case, right? Um, so let's put this one out of the way. All right, now the next thing is to go to the geometry palette click on dynamic subdivision and I'm gonna click on dynamic. So by clicking on dynamic, you see that this square gets smoothed out quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and increase this uh, smooth subdivision to four. So it's a bit smoother. So I think this one is going to be okay. And uh, this doesn't look like a, like a sphere at all, but this is kind of like the first uh, really cool trick that I'm gonna give you. Uh, I'm gonna push this down go to the deformation palette. And in the deformation palette, you have a bunch of sliders. The one that I'm interested in is this called um, Spherize or 
you know, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's, a, it's basically to turn this into a sphere. So I'm going to click and drag to push and look what's happening with the square, right? So I'm going to push it all the way to 100. Maybe you have to do it a couple of times just to really push that square to a sphere shape. There we go. So now it is a sphere, right? But it's still having that subdivision. So let's go ahead and turn that off. This is how the Q cube is looking. So you can sort of tell what I'm going with this. So the green one, um, if I bring again my references in here, uh, the green polygroup would be this patch right here or this section, and the orange one would be the one going across. Maybe from this angle makes more sense, right? So the difference between the polygroups or the colors is ultimately where I'm going to put the stitches. All right, so that is all good. Let's go ahead and turn on dynamic again because we want something very, uh, you know, very spherical. And I'm going to click on apply. So applying just means that now this uh, subdivision is actually added to the geometry. So if you look at my active points, it has increased. Let me undo it so you can see it. Right now I have 26 points. If I apply it, now I have 6,000, right? And I have subdivision level. So I can go down to the first one and to subdivision level five. Uh, I might actually subdivide it one more time so it is even smoother than this. Perfect. But you notice that because this was originally a square, we have these very sharp corners in here. So this is a very sharp corner. I want to have something that is a lot smoother so that I can follow, um, you know, more like a, a rounded shape for the stitches. So this is actually a very simple thing to do. And this is kind of like the, the combination of the first tip that I gave you with the spherize um, slider and another one called the polish by groups. So let's go back to the deformation palette. And we have this one called polish by groups. Now, keep in mind that I'm doing this in the highest subdivision level, because if I do it in the lowest subdivision level, it's going to be very, very strong. So I'm going to click on polish by groups and I'm going to push this all the way to 100. And you'll see the corners. Maybe undo that. I'm going to show you again. Polish by groups all the way to 100. And you see how it smooths that out. I can keep doing this, right? And if I want to have a, a stronger effect, we might go down maybe a couple of subdivision levels to level 4. And let's see what that does now. So polish by groups again. There we go. So you see how it's starting to get a nice rounded shape. So I'm going to keep doing this like so, and that's roughly what I wanted. Now, you see that we are kind of like losing that, you know, spherical shape, but that's all good because we can go back and push this spherize or spherize slider. It's a, it's a hard one for me to pronounce, uh, but basically the one that turns anything into a sphere. That is pretty cool. So we are kind of like halfway there already. So this could be, you know, the starting point for you to sculpt and you can hold control and shift to isolate things. Um, so pretty handy stuff, right? Now, here is the next tip. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. So I'm going to go to the sub tool palette. I'm going to duplicate the, the entire sphere and I'm going to hide the top one. And with this duplicate, I'm going to delete. Um, actually, let's go to the high subdivision level and delete lower. So we have you know, applied that subdivision. Let's go ahead and turn off the line of polyframe so that we can see the colors, but you know, we don't have the, uh, the wireframe in there. Now, the next obvious thing that you might want to do is Go to the brushes and select something like a curve brush. It could be any curve brush, really, and you know, start drawing the curve to create the stitches, right? Uh, and you might have uh, already a custom stitches brushes or something that you have downloaded from the internet. You can just go ahead and do it. Now, if you want to be precise and place those stitches right in the intersection of the polygroups, that's kind of like the next tip, but that's more of, a, of an obvious one. I'm going to go to the stroke palette and then open up the curve function. And you see we have this frame mesh. By default, all of these ones are enabled. But I'm only interested in the polygroups because I want to be able to frame the mesh based on the difference between the polygroups. I'm going to click on frame mesh. And now I have placed a curve. Right now, there, there is nothing in here. Um, I can literally use any IMM brush or any curve brush, really, uh, to place any object that I want along that curve. But you see it is nicely arranged in there. So we can go ahead and do um, you know anything. <laughs> It doesn't really matter. I just want to show you that, that it works. So for instance, the, the curve tubes, right? I can select my brush size to determine how thick I want that. Click on that. And now you see it is going across that, um, that curve. All right, let's go ahead and undo that. Because obviously, what we want to do is create some stitches. But again, that's kind of like the obvious thing. But I want to give you a, a much more controlled way of applying those stitches and having control over the size, the shape, uh, the rotation, and all of that. And for that, we're going to use NanoMesh. So the first thing that we want to do to create that more control approach is uh, select the uh, Curve Flat Snap. Right. So this is a brush that comes with ZBrush, and it creates a single-sided uh, kind of like polygon that goes along the, the curve. So I'm going to increase this brush size a tiny bit like so, and click once. And you see it is um, 
it's a curve that goes along the, the difference between the polygroups. That's great. All right, so I'm going to click somewhere else in here just to accept that. And because this is ultimately an insert brush or a uh, curve brush, it automatically masks everything once we add it, right? So the entire sphere is masked, and we can go to split, and we can click on split on mask points. There we go. And by the way, the reason I duplicated the sphere in the first place uh, and got rid of the subdivision levels is so that I can apply uh, an insert brush. Otherwise, it's going to tell me that I have subdivision levels and I cannot do it. All right, so I'm going to turn this off just for the time being and go to this section right here. Perfect. So this is exactly what I want. Um, one thing that I want to do, though, is I want to subdivide this one time so that I have a, you know, a nicer set of polygons or like a smoother version of this. So Control D which is the same thing as clicking in the geometry palette, subdivide once, and let's go ahead and delete lower. And let's turn on the line so that you can see what I've done here. All right. So basically, this is what I want. I want to have the center line of these polygons roughly matching the difference of the polygroups here on my sphere. And I want to have these two sides of the polygroup. So the idea is that one of the side of the stitches will go in one direction and the other ones in the other one. So basically, what I have here is, if you think about it, this, this polygroup on the right-hand side, that's going to be the equivalent to these stitches right here. And the one on the left-hand side would be the other one, right? All right. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift to access my selection brushes. And I'm going to switch these to the lasso. And here's another trick that you might already know. Again, this is not like a super hidden one. But with the select lasso, you actually can isolate poly loops. So I'm going to click on the edge here. And you see that it automatically hides that entire poly loop. So I can hold Control and W just to assign a different color poly group. There we go. Control Shift and click once in the canvas to bring it back. And now we have different poly groups. Perfect. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that these um, you know points or these uh, you know <laughs> polygons are actually following the spheres nicely uh, because at the moment they're not. So one thing that we can do that's pretty cool and it's again another another tip that I'm, I'm going to give you is to go to the project. And because I have the this bit selected, I'm going to click on project. And Sirius is going to use anything that is visible to project into. So I'm going to click on project all. And you see it is projecting uh, a few bits and pieces. I'm going to keep doing this a few times. And this is kind of like where the, where the tricks comes into place. You see that because these areas are a little bit too, too high up, um, the, the distance is a bit small. So even if I keep doing this project all, project all, it's not going to project properly. So what I need to do is increase this slightly, just a tiny bit. So let's say 0 0.04, project all. And you see how now it is encompassing more of that. So let's keep doing this project, project. There we go. And now this, um, this flat curve or this set of polygons is very nicely applied around the, the, um, the sphere. But it is still a single subtool. So this is perfect. All right, so the next step is to actually create the stitches. That's going to be uh, fairly simple. I want to go ahead and click on the tool here on the thumbnail and click on the ring 3D. All right. And because this is still a primitive 3D, we can adjust a few things. So let's scroll all the way down to the initialize. And I'm going to reduce the subdivide. Uh, maybe let's go for 12. And the L divide, uh, we can go for 12 as well. Or maybe a little bit more than that. So let's go for twice as much. 12 and, and, and 24. So that seems to be a decent size. Let's go back up again, click on Make Polymesh 3D so that we can actually edit it. And we're going to go to the top view, holding Shift just to snap to the top. Make sure that the perspective is off, otherwise, it might not be you know, a straight cut where we're going to be doing. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift to bring back my select rectangular. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift to hide half of it. And then I'm going to delete hidden. So um, I have a custom shortcut for this, which is Control X in my case. But you can just go ahead and go to the geometry palette, modify topology, and click on delete hidden. All right. So now, even if we bring the Control Shift and click and drag, there's nothing in there. Uh, we can also enable the display properties so we can see inside. Uh, and I have that switch map to a custom shortcut as well, which is V for visibility. So I can just toggle that on and off um, fairly easily. And then we can go ahead and tweak the shape of this stitch, right? Because we need to flatten it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the gizmo 3D. And here is another trick that I, that I wanted to give you. I want to hold the Alt key to unlock the, the pivot so I can move it freely without affecting the mesh. And I'm going to push this around here. 
And from here, I'm going to start pushing it down. Now, this is going to push the entire object. So what I want to do, and this is the trick, is to reduce the focal shift. So you can do it from here. You can do it from the right click, or you can also press spacebar. And I'm going to set it to, uh, let's say, you know, zero, just to give you an idea. And now, if I just go ahead and push this down, you see it's not actually pushing the entire object. It's kind of like deforming it. So this is the, the trick with the Gizmo 3D. With the focal shift, you can actually deform or do kind of like a soft deform, right? So I'm going to push this down. Um, if you want something a bit stronger, you can push this slider into the positive value. So just to give you an idea, if I go to 100%, it's going to be very, it's almost no point because there's not enough polygons. So let's go for 43, right? So it's a lot more pointy. Uh, but I think in this case, zero is fine. Just remember that once you finish doing this, uh, set this back to minus 100. Otherwise, uh, when you try to move things, it's going to be a little bit annoying if you, if you don't have the full, the full strength. All right, so that is looking pretty good, actually. Let's go ahead and hold Control, click and drag to mask those points at the bottom and invert the mask by holding Control and click once on the canvas, bring in the gizmo, and let's push this down a bit again, holding the Alt key to unlock the pivot. And I'm going to flatten those. This doesn't have to be done precisely. I mean, it's not 100% necessary. Uh, I just think it's it's a lot better. Um, and the next thing I want to do is close these gaps. And this is going to be important for another tip that I'm going to show you. So control click and drag. Um, and you don't have to have like a perfect close up here. Um, you can do that with the C modeler. Uh, but in fact, you can just go to the modify topology and click on close holes. And that's just going to give you some triangulation. But like I said, it's not important uh, to have this uh, kind of like a perfect close up here. All right. Um, another thing that I want to do is I'm going to bring in the gizmo, center it, and I'm probably going to scale it in this axis a tiny bit more and make it a bit larger like so. All right. So this is my stitch. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead now and from the top, I'm going to create the insert brush for this stitch. So from the brush thumbnail, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on create insert mesh. I want to click on new. And this is important that you create the insert mesh from this angle because that's how ZBrush is going to insert it. So now I can go ahead and click and drag and I have a bunch of stitches. Perfect. Now this is just an insert brush and you can totally go to the stroke palette and go to the curve and click on curve mode. And that way you can create, you know, a curve that has a bunch of stitches and you can obviously edit the distance and all of that. But that's not necessarily the tip that I want to give you. This is kind of like the obvious thing, right? So let's go ahead and undo that. And instead of creating an IMM brush or a curve brush, I'm going to click on the thumbnail and I'm going to also turn this into a nano mesh brush. All right. So the icon here will change to this cube. So I know that this is my nano mesh brush. And it just means that whatever I click on the on, on a polygon, so if I click and drag, this is not an insert brush. This is an actual nano mesh, right? So this is what we want. Um, we'll come back to this in just a second. So let's go back to our working file, which is this one right here. And this is the reason why we have this piece, right? So that we can assign these, um, you know, these stitches as nano mesh, right? So that's how it's going to look. But this is going to give you a lot more control. So let's get into that tip, which is the nano mesh. I'm going to scroll down to the nano mesh palette. So I'm going to open that one up. There we go. And if I just go ahead and click and drag and let go, you see that it appears there. But I want to add it to the entire poly loop. So let's undo that. Hover over this face or any face, really. Press the space bar or right click. And in the target, I'm going to change it from single poly to polygroup all. So now I'm going to target the same color or the same polygroup with the same object. So I'm going to click and drag. And there we go. Here is our first nano mesh. And I already kind of like gave it uh, a bit of curvature but, or, or rotation, but you can totally ignore that. Um, and if I go ahead and click on this one, it's going to add another one. All right. So that is pretty much it, really, <laughs> like in terms of the, the setup. Now, the, the reason I wanted to do it with nano mesh is because you have a lot more control. So one of the things that is going to make things a lot simpler is to hide the, the placement. So you can click on that one, and that way you can see the nano mesh um, on the sphere. And you can go ahead and you know change the, the size of it. So I'm going to go for 0.6 on this one. Um, the index here determines which uh, of the nano mesh instances are selected. So you see that if I edit this, it's only going to do one of the poly loops. So again, let's set this one to 0.6. Uh, actually, 0.7 might be better. And then with this index, let's go to the first one and let's do the same 0.7. So now they're exactly the same size. Perfect. Now let's go into solo mode. Make sure that the placement is showing because what I want to do is I want to push this outside. So right now they're, you know, they're fairly 
in, which is kind of like the, the idea, but um, I need them to be sticking out a little bit so that I can show you another tip. So I'm gonna go ahead and push these or offset them in the Z axis. You see, something like that. So point two, point two is fine. Let's go ahead and go to the index one, offset in the Z axis, point two as well. So they're being offset now, you know, they're still there, they're still stitches, but they're not um, as embedded, and that's intentional. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and hide placement. You can still work like this, but what I wanna do now is actually apply this nano mesh so that they actually become meshes that I can edit. Now, this is the point where I would say that if you don't have ZBrush 2023 or 2024, uh, you're better off leaving this as nano mesh and edit all the settings from the nano mesh. And when I say edit settings, I just means that you can go ahead um, and change the rotation of these, you can change the, the offset, all of that so let's set this back to 34 um, but with the new version of ZBrush you have the ability to apply any changes to all of the stitches because they're sharing the same polygroup and they're sharing the same uh, topology so it's gonna be a lot easier so I just want to mention this at this point in case you don't have 2024 um, you're better off sticking with NanoMesh but for those of you who have 2024 um, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this so I'm gonna go to inventory I'm gonna click on one to mesh and one to mesh because I have to apply both instances. Perfect. So now this is actual mesh. I'm going to go to uh, my move brush. So let's go B to bring in palette, M to filter, and then V. So now I can edit this. Perfect. I'm going to go into solo mode and I'm actually going to split the, the placement and the rest of the stitches. So I'm going to click on the strip here and this angle. Let's find another way to hide it. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna split this. So from the subtool palette, split, split hidden. And now I can go ahead and turn this off. And we have all the stitches in a separate, in a separate subtool. Perfect. All right, so let's leave the stitches as they are right now. We're gonna come back to them and tweak them. But I'm gonna give you another tip to create kind of like the, the holes for the sphere, right? Or like um, the, the little, indentations that would uh, create the effect that there's actually some tension and that the stitches are, you know, <laughs> holding things together. So this is something that you could do by sculpting. So if I select the sphere, let's turn off the polyframe now, um, I'm actually going to smooth this out with more subdivision levels. So I'm going to go for, uh, yeah, four subdivision levels seems to be fine. For this one. Oh, so, so this is the, this is the duplicate. Let me undo that. <laughs> Uh, you know what? This is actually fine. We'll be able to reconstruct it anyway. So yeah, this is fine. So for subdivision levels, that gives me about 1.5 million polygons. I can go to my standard brush. So BST. And I'm going to switch from Z to Z sub. This is not the tip, by the way. This is just to show you um, how you can do this manually if you wanted to. So I can sort of hover over this area, go into solo mode and, you know, push this in like so. Right. And that creates the effect. And then you can go maybe with, um, adding a little bit around it and create that manually. And you'll have to do it for every single area where the stitches are. But the tip that I'm gonna give you, and obviously it's not just for stitches, it would work with anything really, is to actually create a, a much more precise way of doing that. So let's go ahead and combine this sphere, which is kind of like my working sphere, with the stitches as well. So I'm gonna take the stitches and I'm gonna duplicate them just in case. So I have a duplicate here and this is my duplicate sphere. So let's push this down, All right? So I'll be working with only these two. So let's call this one sphere and stitches. This doesn't matter. This is just so that you can see which ones I'm working with. So the idea is that I'm gonna combine these two together in a single uh, tool or in a single subtool, uh, but before I do that, I'm also going to subdivide these um, these stitches. So let's go ahead and divide those. I'm going to go into solo mode to show you. I'm going to click divide a couple of times. Um, so I think one million polygons that should be that should be good. It's it's very similar to what I have in the sphere, and I still have the other one showing. So let's turn this off. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and combine them. And to do that, I can just go ahead and click on the merge and click merge down. Click OK. And we probably lost the subdivision levels. Oh, no, that's fine. We have four subdivision levels. Um, if for some reason you lose your subdivision levels, just make sure that you have uh, the same amount of subdivision in the two subtools that you're combining. That's another tip for you. Now, I don't care about this subdivision at all. Um, actually, I'm just gonna delete lower. 
So this subtool right now doesn't have any subdivision level. And here's one of my favorite tips from this tutorial. Now, this is a plugin that comes installed with ZBrush with, you know, 2022, um, you know, even 2020, I think it was already in there. So I'm going to click on the C plugin palette. And it's a very simple plugin called the Intersection Masker. So the Intersection Masker only has one button. And what it's going to do is going to look at the combination of the subtools. So in this case, all of our um, stitches and the sphere itself. And wherever there is an intersection, is going to mask it out. So it's kind of like um, a Boolean operation that happens behind the scenes. But let's go ahead and do it so that you can see what I mean. Create Intersection Mask. And it created a mask, but obviously only in the areas that has been uh, intersected. So in order to see it, we're going to have to hold Control and Shift and click on this to isolate them. This one inverted. And we have a mask going through the entire area, which is great. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete hidden. Again, I don't, I don't really care about the, uh, the stitches right now because I have another version here. So I'm going to hold Control and X uh, for you guys would be, again, under the geometry palette. Modify, Topology, uh, Delete Hidden. Perfect. So now I have this um, mask. I'm going to go ahead and invert it. And I'm going to mask out the center because the center is more, um, it's going to be more of a, of a crevice than a, than a hole, really. You don't really see it that much. Although, if you want to go for something 100% realistic, there's going to be some version of this that it will be visible anyway. But let's just fix this really quickly. All right, that's perfect. Now let's go ahead and invert that mask. And if you want to save your mask, if you don't want to have to do all this process again in case you accidentally mask it off or whatever, what you can do is you can paint those dots with polypaint. So let's invert that. Let's go to polypaint, select black color, uh, make sure that RGB is selected, go to color here and click on fill object. I'm going to clear my mask. So this is just polypane now. And this is just a temporary polypane. This is another tip for you. Um, and you can go ahead and recover your mask by going to the masking palette and go to the mask by color here and click on mask by intensity. So I'm going to click on intensity. And there we go. Uh, we can also turn off polypane so that you can actually see the mask. Go back to white. There we go. So here is our mask again. And now we can use the deformation palette to create those sort of indentations. So let's go back to the formation here. I'm going to invert my mask and I'm going to push this with the inflate. So I'm going to use the inflate slider inwards. So I'm going to push this in slightly, just a tiny bit. And I'm going to blur the mask holding control and click once on the mask. You see how it blurs things out. Let's go ahead and do it a couple more times. Control click, control click. And now that I have this area that is being on mask, I'm going to use the polish. So I'm going to click, click on polish here. And you see, it's just polishing that hole a little bit more. Uh, let's go ahead and continue holding control and click to blur that mask. I'm going to continue to polish. So I'm just using the polish and blurring that mask to, to generate a nice transition. So now let's go ahead and bring in my, my stitches, the other subtool that I had here. And you see they match perfectly all the stitches. So that is pretty cool, right? You can still go ahead and, and adjust it, but I think this is enough. Um, in fact, let's add a little bit of tension by inflating things the opposite way. So just a tiny bit like so. And let's polish things again. All right, so that is not too bad. Let's go ahead and click and clear that. And we have uh, almost like an automated way of doing that. Perfect. So the next tip is the one that I mentioned is unique to 2024. And I believe 2023 also has it, um, which is this one. Let's go ahead and open up the geometry palette. And here, let's collapse a few of these so that it's not as busy. And this one is the one that I'm talking about. Repeat two similar parts. So I'm going to click on that one. All right. So this is how I'm going to push my my stitches back in so that it looks, you know, the this tension. And I'm going to do that with the move topological. So I'm going to press B, M, T for topological. That's the brush. And I'm also going to go to the brush palette. And let's go to the curve and click on AccuCurve so that we have a, a more pointy version of that brush. And let's go ahead and select the subtool, the right subtool, so these the stitches. And you see I have polygroups, right? Um, in fact, let's go ahead and go into solo mode. We have to be careful here because the green ones are a different group or a different polygroup. So at this point, we don't really need the, the close areas anymore. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift to isolate this and also the purple one and invert the selection. So essentially what I've done is I, I hid those 
those end caps and I'm going to delete them. Hold control and X. Again, this is just a shortcut for my, my UI, but um, you can just delete it from delete hidden in the modified topology. And that way we can just sort of like push this uh, a bit more comfortable. Uh, now, the reason I had that end cap there or like that extra polygroup closing each one of the stitches is so that the intersection masker could work because ultimately what the intersection masker is doing is a boolean operation and for that you need to have uh, kind of like watertight meshes right but now we don't need it right all right so now with the move topological i can just go ahead and push this in and adjust it a little bit but in order to use this feature of apply similar i need to have a recorded stage in the undo history so these lines right here so if i hold the control key and this can be done with any brush really doesn't really matter so hold control and click once in here and you'll see that it creates that sort of white line inside the yellow line and that means that ZBrush has recorded the current state of this now I'm going to use um, my move topological to adjust any of these ones really doesn't matter so I'm going to reduce my brush and by the way this is another tip um, that I should give you that is also unique to 2024 uh, but it's worth it you don't have to use it but it's a uh, it's an interesting one so I'm going to hold control and click and drag to mask this section and in the masking tools let's go to masking you have this grow all so that is going to look at the continuity of the topology so in this case just a single stitch click on grow all and it basically masks just this bit so that's great let's go ahead and invert that and we can only work or adjust this one all right so now i can push this in and start working on that sort of tension manually uh, maybe we can give it a, a tiny bit of curvature not too much because ultimately you want something pretty straight if it's creating that um, tension anyway. All right, something like this. And I think this is close enough. All right, so I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and clear that mask. And as you can see between this point, the yellow one where we currently are in the undo history and the white one, we did a few changes, right? And that's what is being recorded in the, in the undo history. So this one right here is the one that we edited. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and go back to my geometry palette and I'm going to click on apply to similar just with the default settings. I'm going to click on that and you see ZBrush is going to apply, you know, the change that I did in a single stitch to absolutely all the stitches. So that is pretty cool. All right. So that's the tip, really. Uh, you can just go ahead and further tweak this um, if you wanted to. Maybe it's a little bit too you know, sticking out too much. Um, so all you have to do is hold control and click once to mark another point in history or in the in time history and then do the same thing as you can see you can do anything you want right but i'm gonna keep it simple um maybe a tiny bit but i think you get the idea all right so now we have the stitches and i'm gonna go ahead and hold control and d to subdivide this a couple more times so now we have more of a subdivision in here um we can also go to the the formation palette again we've been using in this tutorial quite a bit and we can also smooth it out or polish those stitches a bit more it's barely visible. It would actually be more visible if you have um, a lower subdivision level selected. So in the geometry palette, let's go back to one or maybe two. And let's do it again. See, it's just slowly changing things, but I think I did it. I overdid it. All right, something like that is fine. Perfect. So now we can go back to the sphere, to the actual baseball, and we can work on the indentation of the crevice in between the stitches. Now, this is something that I prefer to do it manually, so I'm going to show you that first. By the way, if you see this red line here, um, that means that ZBrush has recorded a state in the undo history. So to get rid of it, just press the control key once in here to set a new point and then control again just to remove it. And you see it removes the, uh, the, the current state or the, the safe state. Now, I'm going to use a custom brush that is part of one of my brushes pack. I'll put a link in the description if you wanted to, to try it out. And it's called the HR Geiger Cutter, this one right here. And it's a very strong version of the dam standard brush. So you can totally do it with the dam standard as well. So what I can do is just start going through, uh, again, let's bring in the stitches so we can see what we're doing. So this is what I would prefer to do. Um, I'd rather do this manually because it gives me some kind of imperfection and that's kind of like the point. Um, but if you don't want to do it manually, I'm going to show you another tip. So that's just how I would approach this, this process personally. But again, if you want to automate things a little bit more, or if you have something a bit more complex, uh, because remember, this is not just for um, a baseball. It's just that this is the simplest object I could uh, think of to show you all the tips that I'm showing you. But this is applicable to a bunch of different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into solo mode. 
and I'm gonna bring in my polyframe, the stone of the line, and I'm gonna go to the masking palette. So let's go to masking, and you have this mask by feature, which is similar to uh, some of the things that we've used in the past. Uh, for instance, the stroke, you know, the frame mesh, you can frame by border, polygroup, or crease edge. So you have uh, similar things in here. Obviously, we're interested in groups, so I'm gonna turn this off and click on mask by feature. And you see we have a nice mask area around here. Now, what I can do is I can boost that mask. So you have a few options here in the masking palette. So we can uh, grow your mask or you can boost that mask. So the boost mask is going to give you something a lot stronger. So let's go ahead and grow it a little bit. And that also applies a nice um, you know, blur to it. And if you click on boost mask, it's kind of like pushing the, the center line towards the edges and sharpen everything. So you can boost mask again. You see sort of like boosting that, the intensity of that. Uh, but I think what I have here might be good, maybe a little bit more actually. So boost and blur or grow it a bit more. All right. So this is kind of like the first pass. I'm going to turn off polyframes just so I can see this. Yeah, I need to blur this. A bit more so all of these that i'm doing really is just something that you can do from these um you know settings or buttons of the masking just to dilute the mask or you know change it a, li a little bit uh, but that's pretty much it so once this is done i'm gonna bring back everything uh, i'm gonna go ahead and go to the deformation palette again um, here we go and i'm gonna use the invert mask to push this in a little bit so let's click on the inflate push this in just a tiny bit so minus four that should be good so that's kind of like the first um sort of indentation let's clear the mask right we can refine this later with smooth brushes or you know even with the damp standard brush um i'll show you that in a second but that's basically the the cut or the indentation that we're going to create now let's go ahead and do this one more time so mask by feature again i have groups enabled and it creates that line right in the center and let's go back to sorry mask and click on grow mask again and i'm going to boost it one more time Grow mask again a couple of times just to smooth it, invert it. So this is kind of like the same process that I did, but this time I have a sharper line, right? I didn't boost it or grow it as much. And let's go back to, again, the formation palette here. And this time I'm going to deflate it or push this in quite a bit. All right. Now we can clear the mask. And these corners here, just because of the topology underneath, um, I'm going to smooth it out with, with the smooth brush. Nothing crazy here. All right, not too bad. Now, if I bring in my uh, my stitches, there's some areas that might need tweaking, like this one, and that's a simple thing just to go with the move brush or the move topological, and just push this slightly so that it, they fit right in the center. Okay, so you can just go ahead and do that manually. Just a, a bit of a slight adjustment to some of the, the center of this line, uh, but you know, that's part of the process. Uh, but the final thing that I want to do is inflate things a bit more, uh, because if you look at it kind of like in the profile, these stitches are very, very prominent, right? And also, if I inflate things, this, this crevice is going to uh, kind of like tighten up a little bit. So I can go ahead and click on inflate just a tiny bit, maybe a value of two, bring back everything. And that is much better. All right, so that is it. I'm going to go ahead and use the move topological this time. And I want to create a bit more of a, an organic feel to it so that not all the stitches are perfectly the same or perfectly aligned. Um, so you see I have like these areas that I can, if I select the stitches, that I can push in like so. And this is going to create a much better, uh, a much more, you know, a much more realistic effect, right? If I just do it like this. I'm also going to turn off um, AccuCurve now from the brush palette. Let's clear this up. And that allows you to also adjust things a little bit. If you want to create some kind of like variation in the stitching, you know, make it fatter or slimmer. So this is the, the more manual process. But I guess at this point, there's no, there's no more tricks. This is kind of like the thing that you have to do. And that's about it, really. So now you have a baseball that you can just go ahead and you know, apply some textures, some details. Um, just to wrap up this tutorial, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can sculpt this. So the first one is that if you select the sphere, you can go to the lowest subdivision level. So in the geometry palette, uh, we don't have subdivisions for this one, but because it's a fairly simple uh, geometry that we created from a cube, we can actually reconstruct subdivision. So that's, you know, another tip. So I'm going to click on reconstruct. You see now I've reconstructed one and I keep doing that up to this point. I think this is fair enough. Yeah, so this is going to be my low resolution mesh. I can actually go even lower. 
So to something like this, and then I now have uh, six subdivision levels, which is great. All right, so I'm going to go to the lowest subdivision level, and because I already have polygroups, I'm going to use the C plugin, go to the UV master, make sure that symmetry and polygroups is enabled, and click on unwrap. So that is going to give me um, a polygroup or a, or a UV island for each one of the polygroups, right? So if I go to the UV map here and click on morph UV, you'll see this is my UV. Uh, obviously, it's not perfect like it could be adjusted a little bit more but this is not a uv mapping tutorial i just want to show you that this is just a quick way of generating uvs and you could do the same thing for the stitches in fact let's go ahead and select that and i'm going to go to obviously the lower subdivision level in this case go to c plugin unwrap everything so now i have uvs for this one uh, but i'm going to concentrate on the sphere so i'm going to click on the sphere and let's go to surface and in fact, let's go to the subdivision level 6. Go to surface, click on noise. And this is kind of like the first pass. You can apply this noise. You click OK and apply to mesh. So now this noise is applied to the mesh. You can go for something, um, something else, but this is you know, fairly simple. And if you want, because we're using UVs, you can enable noise, edit noise, and bring in your own alpha here. So I'm going to click on alpha. And I'm going to load uh, kind of like a leathery alpha, this one right here. I'm going to turn off the noise scale. And the mix basic noise strength to zero and that way i can play with the alpha size and the strength so you see i'm getting that sort of shape it's a bit too intense the other way around just to add a, a bit of you know wear and tear and maybe the leathery effect click ok and i forgot to do something you see there is a, a bit of a stretch in here uh, in fact let's click on edit and this is why I did the UV. So I'm going to click on UV. So now this is um, a texture that is being applied over the UV. So that's a bit more realistic. Let's click OK. And we can apply to mesh. There we go. So now we have nice texture for the sphere. And you can go ahead and do the same thing for the, the threads or the, you know, the stitches. And that's pretty much what I have in my final sphere. Right? Obviously, I spent a bit more time tweaking them and doing some manual work to, to make it look a bit better. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. That is the end of this tutorial, uh, full of tips and tricks. And hopefully what I've shown you gives you some ideas. I would recommend that you go through this tutorial linearly and produce your own baseball so that you can get familiar with all the tips and tricks that I gave you. Um, and if you have some questions about it, feel free to drop them in the comments of this video. And also, if you share in social media your result of this tutorial with your baseball, uh, feel free to tag me at Pablanda so that I can see uh, what you've come up with and maybe also get some ideas as well for myself. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.